today. I have Elena Chuka. She is the formation coordinator for Lumen Christi in the Diocese of Sioux Falls. Welcome, Elena. Thanks. I'm so glad you came in today. We are going to talk about, um, if you have received your Bishop's Bulletin, which you should have, you will see in the feature story, we talk about the pathway of discipleship. And actually, it's kind of a theme through the whole issue. Right. And um, Elena is very well uh, versed. Versed is a weird way to say it. <laughs> she knows this pathway very well. She has mm-hmm. walked it herself, and she helps other people uh, walk along the path. So we're going to talk about what this is, mm-hmm. why it matters. Is it just for missionaries? Mm-hmm. The answer is no. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I got the first one right. Yes. <laughs> so thanks well for being here with yeah. us today. Um, Elena, will you first just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and mm-hmm. a little bit about Lumen Christi for those who have never heard of it yet in our diocese, which would be hopefully very few people. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I grew up in the diocese mm-hmm. in Wagner. Okay. So um, grew up in St. John the Baptist Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, I, after high school, I went to USD, which is where I encountered the Newman Center and Focus Uh, for the first time, Mm -hmm. um, which is also where I encountered the pathways. Sure. So, um, Focus kind of uses this model as well, um, for helping students to grow as missionary disciples. Mm -hmm. And so my first exposure to it really was as a student reaching out to other students. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then after I graduated from USD, I went to La Crosse, Wisconsin as a focus missionary for two oh, years. La Crosse is a great town. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yeah, loved it, is. it. So how long were you a focus missionary? Two years. Two years. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you came back here. Yep. So I came back and I was teaching for four years. So I'm oh, wow. trained as a high school English teacher. Okay. <laughs> oh boy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but again, I am a writer and so, but sometimes yep. my English is not so great when I'm speaking. So I'll do That's my fine. best. I won't correct you. <laughs> yeah. Good. So I think uh, towards the middle of that fourth year of teaching is when I started hearing more about this vision for the diocese of missionary discipleship, mm, mm-hmm. and it brought back a lot of the memories that I'd had from Focus and the things that I'd loved with that. And then I heard about Lumen Christi Mm -hmm. and I was hesitant at first because it was a new program. Mm -hmm. Um, But as I was praying with it and hearing more about it, it was just, um, I could see how clearly it was aligning with both my experience as a Focus missionary and as a teacher. Wow. Um, So my role within it is the formation coordinator. Mm -hmm. So I get to organize weekly check-ins with missionaries Mm -hmm. and help facilitate training. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful role in that I get to do what I loved as a missionary and what I loved as a teacher. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So Lumen Christi replaced Totus Tuus Mm -hmm. in the diocese. So how is it different than what Totus Tuus was? Right. So Totus Tuus was a summer program, Mm -hmm. um, primarily oriented more towards the younger kids. So like VBS. Right. Um, what we're trying to do with Lumen Christi is, again, to emphasize the formation for the missionaries themselves. Mm-hmm. So that's the primary role right. is to offer formation for young adults in our diocese. Yeah. And so it's a diocesan run program and we serve the diocese. Right. So we have the summer program still, which has some similarities. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, with an eye towards how can we best encounter the people in our parishes um, and help our young people, um, especially junior high, high school, um, as they're taking these first steps um, in really living this faith for themselves. That's really cool that 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 has evolved that way because it's really important. Otherwise, our younger, the junior high, high school, there aren't that many opportunities for them to really explore their faith and and Mm -hmm. grow in it. Right. That's really cool. And then it's also responding to that need from, okay, we have this awesome summer program. Mm -hmm. They encounter these missionaries for a week and they might be really on fire there. And then what? Nothing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So we also have what's really new this year has been the year round Mm -hmm. academic Mm -hmm. year Mm -hmm. um, aspect of it. So we've had two teams of missionaries um, primarily working with Aberdeen and Del Rapids this year um, where they can be full time mm-hmm. um, serving as missionaries, yeah. starting Bible studies or book studies, yep. encountering you, students one on one. I bet you've seen a lot of fruit from that so far. Yeah. Yeah. Our um, D camps are full. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I heard are that going is, it, deeper. is it the high school one that was usually not always full, or was it the junior high? Honestly, I can't remember. One of the two, but, and then yeah. all of a sudden this year was full right yep. away. So I heard. all of our camps are yeah. full, which is amazing. Yes. yes. So yeah, we've we've definitely been able to see tangible ways, even with people that have applied mm-hmm. to be summer missionaries mm-hmm. this year that have encountered missionaries oh, yeah. over the course of the yeah. year. That's how it's um, supposed to work. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're really excited Good. about these first stages yeah. of this program. Good. All right. So can you, we'll get, we'll move on to the pathway of discipleship. Cause I really, mm-hmm. when I heard about this, I thought this is really interesting and what a helpful way. Cause we're all supposed to evangelize. And this right. is really part of evangelization mm-hmm. is what this pathway is. And it really gives you a kind of a guide. So mm-hmm. we need to give us a general idea of what this is first. Right. So primarily I would say it's a tool for those that are seeking to evangelize. Mm-hmm. Um, So it's a way to kind of help form us as missionary disciples Mm -hmm. in being attentive to the people that we're encountering, um, receiving from them, like some of their perceptions of the church, Mm -hmm. um, of Christ, Mm -hmm. and to then respond to that so that we're not just like throwing information at them when they don't trust the church. Right. Um, So if I try to meet someone with all of this doctrine, they're going to be like, why should I listen to any of that? Because I've had... All of these negative perceptions. Right. Which is what I think is really scary for those right. of us that are supposed to be evangelizing and thinking, well, no one really wants to hear that. Mm-hmm. And that's true because of the way we're presenting it. So this mm-hmm. is really helpful. Right. Yeah. And it takes the pressure off of us mm-hmm. a little bit too, because you can see by looking at the pathways that, oh, okay, this is actually like a natural step. Right. Um, so it doesn't say, yeah, it's easier to um, start thinking about, okay, what are things? tangible things that I could mm-hmm. do. Yeah. What's the um, right approach to build yeah. a relationship yeah. where it's not so confrontational or yeah. um it just flows more naturally, mm-hmm. um, feels more genuine. Yeah. So that's really, I think for me, what's been most helpful with right. this. Right. So it, does it we're gonna talk in just a second about the eleven stages of growth, but mm-hmm. does it seem to people sometimes as like a labeling mm-hmm. or um kind of putting people in a box, sort of? Right. So sometimes when people will look at the full pathways Mm -hmm. and they receive it as, okay, I label this person, I have to find the right label (laughs) and like put them in this box and this is where they're at. Right. And then I'm supposed to do X, Y, Z. And that's really not what this is oriented towards. Um, It's a tool for us to be able to just brainstorm some ways to continue being intentional about our conversations. Right. Right. Um, So it's not at all about labeling. It's primarily for our own formation in making sure that we're actually receiving where someone else is at. Right. And then responding to that, praying into that so that we can find opportunities to be good witnesses. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. So important. Okay. We go through the 11 stages of growth in the pathway, if you would. Yeah. So the ones, especially for us as Lumen Christi missionaries with the people that we're working Mm -hmm. with, we really focus on some of these earlier stages. Okay. Uh, just because that's where most of these are younger at. people, sure. Right. Yeah. Um, but for all of us, I think it's incredibly important to be aware of these first right. few stages. Yes. Um, so we can look at pre-trust where um, they don't really, the person that we're reaching out to might have zero connection with the church okay. or even with a Catholic or a Christian. Okay. Or if they have any experience, it's very negative. Oh, sure. So they okay. have this kind of negative mindset. Okay. So at that stage, we want to make sure that we're not just like, you're living a terrible life <laughs> and you need to listen to what I'm saying. Right. Um, Might be a bad way to go about it. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and so there's pre-trust. And then once you have an opportunity to kind of start to build rapport and actually get to know who they are as a mm-hmm. person and let them get to know you as a person, mm-hmm. then we start moving into trust. Okay. Where they can have this authentic encounter with who you are and maybe have a positive experience um, with a missionary or with you specifically mm-hmm. so that they have a good connection with someone who is Christian or sure. who is Catholic. Sure. Um, so it just builds some trust to be able to be more open. Right. So one thing that we would look at as missionaries here or as missionary disciples generally would be to make sure we're building relationship Mm -hmm. and fostering this charism of hospitality. Sure. Um, Because we want people to feel welcome and to know that we are receiving who they are Mm -hmm. and not just making assumptions. And at this point, would you even be talking about the church or anything necessarily? 
Um, probably not in like a really evangelistic way. Okay. Um, you are absolutely free to like share that you're praying. Um, mm-hmm, sure. And like be authentically who you are. You right. don't have to hide connections to mm-hmm. the faith. Um, but you're not like forcing it upon them. Sure. Yeah. Um, cause it really is at this stage, just encountering another person right. and building a relationship with them. Right. Right. Um, and then the rest can come. Sure. Right. As they see how you live your life, how mm-hmm. you speak, they might ask more questions, mm-hmm. which leads into that next stage, which okay. is curiosity. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're more intrigued here. Um, they might want to learn a little bit more. Um, it's still kind of passive. So it's not like they're taking active steps to really be involved. They're not buying any books yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a curiosity. Mm-hmm. So they might start asking some questions. Sure. Um, or asking for clarification about things that they've heard Mm -hmm. about the church. Mm -hmm. Um, So at this stage, it's still kind of distant from themselves. Um, And here, it's really important for us to be patient, Sure. um, ask questions, Mm -hmm. um, try to gather what their experience actually is Mm -hmm. so that we can speak truth into that. Mm -hmm. Um, And here, a charism we'd want to pay attention to would be mercy. So like not making judgments about some of their misconceptions or Mm -hmm. misunderstandings, but just receiving them and continuing to build that trust. Right. Okay. What's next? Openness. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now, now they're like, I saw a book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Still not buying it, right. but I saw the book. <laughs> um, so at this stage, like they've, they've fostered some of that curiosity and there's a little bit more of their own initiative that's kind of entering into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're, is an awareness and an openness to the idea that, okay, there might be something in my life that Mm -hmm. needs to change. Mm -hmm. And this person that I'm talking to, there might be something in them that I want. Um, And so in that spirit of openness, right, they've not made concrete commitments, like Mm -hmm. deciding I'm going to go to confession and change how I'm living my life. Right. um, Or go to mass or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, everything in this for like, if I'm encountering someone who's at openness, this is where more of that evangelism can sure, come in. Sure, sure. Um, because they're acknowledging that there might be something else that they're missing. Okay. Um, and everything here is really oriented towards being able to share the gospel with them. Okay. Like okay. who Christ is, sure. that he died for us, that he's extending this invitation for personal relationship. Okay. Um, so this is that key kind of stage yeah. where we want to start like preparing them for that. Okay. Um, which propels then into seeking, okay. which is the next stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point, you know, you go from openness to seeking. Mm -hmm. So that passive kind of reception of all of the information is fading Mm -hmm. and it's becoming much more active. Okay. So they might be looking things up on Google Mm -hmm. or like, Mm -hmm. um, showing up at a Newman center and just seeing what's available. Mm -hmm. They might be looking at a parish website. Um, but everything here is really like they want to know. Mm -hmm. And so they're actively trying to learn. Okay. Um, so this is where we can begin to teach. Okay. um, Sure. Because they want to know. Right. They're coming to us with questions. Right. Um, and this is where we can start making invitations to Bible studies or or to go to mass with them or. It's much more effective there. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Because they're ready to take some of those Mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then. From seeking, this is where we really need the shift starts to happen after this, where there's a concrete decision where, okay, I've learned some of this. I've encountered some beauty and goodness and truth. And now, like, I want to commit my life to this. Okay. Um, I want to have a relationship with Christ Mm -hmm. because I can see all the ways that it's been really beautiful and really good. Right. And so once that decision has been made, that's where we lead into the beginning disciple. Oh, okay. So this is the person who's made that concrete commitment mm-hmm. um, and they just need support. Right. Right. So checking in with them if they're praying as they had set goals to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so the charism that we would talk about would be pastoring. So it's okay, really making sure, sure that they're um, being fed, that they have community um, so that they know who they can lean on. Yeah. Because um, oftentimes there's kind of a shift in social groups at this point. Oh, too. Sure. Um, It'd be real easy for them to feel alone, maybe, if there's no one with them. Right. Yeah. Yep. So to make sure that they know who they can turn to is really important here. Yep. Hmm. Very cool. Okay. And then from beginning, we go to growing disciple. Um, This person is really like developing their heart for God. Mm -hmm. Um, And so at this stage, you'll see more um, activity within the church. 
Um, they're making more sacrifices, um, like of their time, especially Mm -hmm. to be able to grow. Um, so they might, um, instead of having a half an hour to binge something on Netflix, right. They might (laughs) stop by the adoration chapel. Right. Right. Um, there's a sacrifice that's starting to be made here as they go. Um, because they've experienced this goodness. So they're making like tangible changes to their lives, even if they might be smaller, but they're Mm -hmm. tangible changes. Right. Because it's about building those habits of virtue here. Right. Um, and then from there we go into commissioned disciple and here is where we're starting to see more of that response Mm -hmm. to the great commission. Right. Um, and so they recognize that. Um, spirit of evangelism within the church Mm -hmm. and that call to missionary discipleship. So they've built up all of these habits of virtue. They've been praying more. They're making sacrifices to grow personally. Mm -hmm. But at commission disciple, it's like, okay, this isn't just for me. Right. Um, So now it's my turn to go out and serve. Mm -hmm. And so that's what a commissioned disciple would be doing. Okay. And then the next two would be disciple maker and then Mm -hmm. spiritual multiplier. Mm -hmm. So disciple maker would be someone who has then turned and kind of walked through this with someone else. Okay. Um, So they've helped facilitate a conversion to Christ and his church um, by just being intentional with receiving that person, um, having good conversations with them, inviting them to a personal relationship with Christ, and then helping them to kind of walk through this pathway. Mm -hmm. So this is where a lot of the Lumen Christi missionaries are probably at, Mm -hmm. usually. Right. Okay. Yep, because they're intentionally working with individuals mm-hmm. to try to help them to foster their own relationship sure. with Christ. Sure. Yep. Okay. And then spiritual multiplier is the last one. Um, this person's equipped for lifelong missionary discipleship. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have helped someone to also be able to do that for someone oh, else. Oh, okay. okay. So it just kind of is extending beyond sure. um, that initial relationship. Right. Right. Okay. So I imagine this doesn't all just happen from the begin, from the first one all the way to the end. Right. And does anyone ever get to the end? Does, <laughs> does everyone get to the end is what I should say. Does, right. Like, uh, I can't imagine everyone does. I think that's a discernment, right? Sure. Um, so someone who is a missionary is probably going to have more opportunities right. to see this Absolutely. in a really concrete way. We might not all see it, mm-hmm. um, but I think there is an opportunity for all of us to okay. like, reach that. Sure. Um, that's a good way to say it because you might have an effect on people that you don't right. know you had because mm-hmm. you're not a missionary. So you're not in that right. all the time. Mm-hmm. That's a good way to say that. Yeah. Right. And especially for someone like if you're leading a Y disciple group, mm-hmm. you have no idea where some of those students right. might end up. Right. So the impact that we can have, we don't necessarily see all the time. Absolutely. Um, but it's also not like a really linear thing. Okay. Like, okay. I've reached uh, openness and now I can never I'm revert here. back. <laughs> right. Like, right. Um, there is, especially in those early stages, there can be um, some back and forth, mm-hmm. right? As things happen in life, right. um, things can kind of throw us for a loop. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we don't, it's not always necessarily right. X leads to Y. Leads right, to right. Um, which is fine and, and good. <laughs> this is really just a tool for us to be able to, again, like encounter another person and recognize, okay, there's something that's going on with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where maybe I need to ask some more questions before yes. I um, make assumptions about right. where they are. So how, what's the best way for like a lay person to use this? Is it, mm-hmm. how is it most helpful? I think being able to look at it in like honesty mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. to reflect a little bit on, especially if you've made attempts before mm-hmm. um, to reflect and see, okay, with this person in mind, um, where might they have been in this pathway and how was I responding right. to questions they had or didn't have? Mm-hmm. Um, how was I approaching them about these faith topics? Mm-hmm. Um, because then, again, it's really a reflective tool for us to be able to, in the future, um, be more receptive to where they are and proactive in how we can actually like accompany them right. um, in their relationship with Christ. Right. I think it would be really helpful because... A lot of times you don't really necessarily know where a person is, right. but when you have that kind of guide there, you can look mm-hmm. and say, well, it seems to me by their actions or by right. their, their, the way they're talking, whatever, that mm-hmm. they're probably here. Mm-hmm. And then you know what, how to start with them. 
right. at least. You have an and idea. it helps you know kind of what to be looking for, right. too. Right, um, yes. And even if you don't know exactly, like, are they at curiosity or openness? Right. I don't really know. Right. Um, that's okay. Yeah. We can just then go ahead and, um, like, look at potential things that might be helpful mm-hmm. for reaching out to them mm-hmm. that would fit in one of those two. And that might help us to further clarify kind of right. where they're at. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have, like, a couple minutes left, and so I hope you have something you can fit into that much time. <laughs> yes. But can you tell us about a time when you've seen this tool really mm-hmm. help a missionary mm-hmm. or just a layperson be able to effectively mm-hmm. walk with someone when they're right. on their journey? Yeah, I thought of when I was I was a focused missionary at the time. Um, it was in my first year, mm-hmm. and I had just gotten to lacrosse, and there was someone, this young woman, that was showing up a lot, um, took us on a hike. Uh, was helping us set up for all of our outreach events. Mm -hmm. And so I was making assumptions like, oh, yeah, she must be in discipleship already and like really committed because she's showing up at all of this stuff. Right. And I think that's a common kind of pitfall Mm -hmm. that we have. We make Mm -hmm. assumptions based on someone's attendance at parish events. Right. Um, The reality, though, that I learned later, (laughs) like weeks later, Uh um, was that her Bible study leader approached me and just explained that um, it seemed like she might be ready for discipleship, but uh, she had hesitations still. Mm-hmm. And so she just needed someone to still walk with her and have those intentional one on one conversations. Mm-hmm. And so when I did that, it was really eye opening to me like, oh, I missed some really good opportunities <laughs> to actually encounter where she was right. because I just made assumptions based mm-hmm. on her attendance. Right. Um, and the, yeah, it was beautiful to be able to then over the next two years. Um, actually walk with her where she was right? um, and to see her wrestle with some of those questions and to not be afraid of where she was actually at. Right. um, But to just meet her in the midst of that and then watch as she started um, leading a Bible study of her own. And then um, in the next year, discern that I'm not called to lead a Bible study right now. I'm actually called to be very intentional with the people within my program Mm -hmm. um, and make sure that the way that I'm living my life is a witness to them. Right. And it was really beautiful, um, even if it wasn't like the clear model, right? And start a Bible study, disciple someone within it, um, because she was discerning that for herself. Right. Right. Which having walked through the pathways, Mm -hmm. she had the language to be able to then like articulate that well for herself. Yeah. Um, and even as she graduated and moved, she was really influential in helping to start a young adult community. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So I think for me, that's a really powerful reminder, um, because if she hadn't been in a Bible study where Mm -hmm. that leader would have directly told me, Mm -hmm. Hey, this is not actually where she's at. Um, who knows how long it would have taken me to actually have a conversation to the point of realizing that. Right. Um, so that was, yeah, that's probably one example, I yeah. would say. That's that's a, a great one. one. That's yeah. a great one. Mm-hmm. Well, Elena, we are out of time. We have to still leave some for Dr. Bergwald at the yes. beginning. So <laughs> <laughs> if people want to learn more about Lumen Christi, it's mm-hmm. sfcatholic.org. Is it slash Lumen dash Christi or is it all one word? I can't all remember. Word. All one word. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Uh, sfcatholic.org slash Lumen Christi. Yep. You want to learn more about that. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today and walking through this with us. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully it'll be really helpful for mm-hmm. people. All right. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Uh, You can, of course, always find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at SF Diocese anytime you like. That is it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.